Um, CSI has been around for a while. Uh, we're old. Um, we're celebrating right now. We're in the middle of our 25th year now. We'll be 26 in August. We like to consider ourselves the leading provider of add-on products for IMUS. Uh, products being something with a manual, something that's supported, and something that's enhanced over time. Way back when, we wrote iMerge. iMerge, we think, is still the most powerful duplicate merge product for IMUS, still used by quite a few people. Then we wrote Event Closer, as we like to call it, or Meeting Closer, um, that uh, closes your events. You don't lose any detail. I email Desktop came around somewhere in there. Uh, still a great way to do uh, full cycle end-to-end -end communications with your members and prospects where you can actually store the email in IMIS. Uh, two of our hottest products right now are our import product, uh, iImport and Activity Importer Plus, for customers that need to bring in outside data and or update data in IMIS. Our online donation solution, CSI Donate. If you're a fundraising user, you should have this module. If you don't, please talk to us. We wrote this for the fundraising users. Uh, it's not something we make any money on, really. It's just about uh, covering up some challenges with the IMS fundraising module where you can't change a gift once it's been uh, saved or posted. If you're in the U.S., uh, you're up too late. Uh, but if you are, we do have our iMove product for national change of address product uh, change. Page filter is our web tool to kind of bend and twist rise to make it do fun things that it was never intended to do. Uh, a lot of the people in the U.K. use it to hide things. You, you can do a lot of this stuff with JavaScript today, but the beauty of page filter is that everything's kept in one location. So when you go to upgrade to IMAS 2017, you don't lose anything. Our geolocation tool, IMAP. Also, again, if you're in the U.S. or in Canada, our uh, freight rate importer product. Uh, iDocument, uh, created a couple years ago when everyone was losing their IMAS guru at the office, and then no one knew what he or she had set up. <clears throat> they didn't know what the demographic tables were. Excuse me, they didn't know anything about activities, they didn't know what stored procedures were out there, what jobs were running. So iDocument will help you document your entire IMS setup. And why we're here today, iEmail Cloud. So iEmail Cloud is <clears throat> a pretty cool product. Um, we say no software to install. You just kind of point your uh, Office 365 or Exchange 2016 web client to it, and it's there. Um, speaking of that, it works on Outlook Web Access, OWA. Uh, it works on the Outlook Desktop product, just like iEmail Desktop. you got to be on 2013 or 2016. Oh, darn it, I've got to change this because it actually works on Outlook for the Mac now, which is really cool. you got to be on the latest version of 16, but we do support Outlook for the Mac now. And, of course, on your mobile device. Microsoft had a, an older product called OWA uh, that you could download. Now they have their new Outlook for iOS and Android. It is an amazingly powerful product. Uh, it even works with Gmail. It's wonderful. Um, and iEmail Cloud works on that as well. So your version matters a little bit. I don't know if anybody on here is on 100 or 200, but um, this is one of the first third-party products that works with IMS 100 or 200. Uh, most clients that are out there on IMIS 15 or 20, uh, you're really on 300 is what it's called, and that's either an on-premise or hosted. 100 and 200 are brand new uh, products um, made for small organizations, very, very different than the IMIS we know and love, uh, but some very cool things in it. Uh, and if you're on, oh, wait, that can't be right. So this was the case way back when, uh, well, I say way back when, a week and a half ago, you had to be on IMS 20.2 Q4 2015 or higher. That's changed. We are now supporting IMS 15.1.3 and higher. Actually, I know they've tested down to 15.1.2. This is very cool. There is some software to install if you're on an early version of 15 or 20. Uh, we emulated the RESTful API from ASI, and it is really awesome because now we can support clients that are on older versions of IMS. Another big difference is it's licensed by user. So tell us how many users you need or how many users you want. That's what you're going to license. You do not need to license all of your staff. And you can even license more than all of your staff. So what are some of the features of the product? Well, just like the old IEML desktop, I say old, it's still being sold today and still a lot of people using it. You can search IMS for email addresses. 
by last name, first name, company, city, state, zip. Oh, no zip, sorry, country. By groups. Groups are a new terminology to IMIS. They're really, really powerful. They're known to the IMIS 100 and 200 users. They're new to us 300 users, but they've always been there. The difference is the API that ASI makes available groups things, and I'll show you what those groups are in a minute. And then IQA. You can do so much with IQA today, so we've exposed that. You can search your entire database by using an IQA, even with prompt. <clears throat> kind of what it looks like, contact, groups, and IQA. This is the contact screen where I talked about searching by last, first, company, city, state, and country. Here are our groups. Groups can be a committee. Groups can be everyone that have paid a certain dues item. Groups can be a company. Groups can be a relationship. They can even be a chapter. Really cool stuff. And then here's our IQAs. So what are some of the features of iEmail Cloud? Well, we can save any email to IMIS. In the desktop product, we do that with one click. We save and send. It's a little different in the cloud, and that's due to some Microsoft rules. Um, in Microsoft, we're going to go ahead and save it to IMIS before we send the email. And the difference is we're going to save it as an interaction or an activity. So there's my, I'm sending Brandy an email. There's my save to IMIS button and it's going to go ahead and drop right into IMIS. You can also take any email that's been sent to you and received and drop it into IMIS as an interaction or as an activity. Heads up, you're not on 20, you can't put it in as an interaction. Interactions are only visible in the staff site. Activities, though, are visible in the desktop, and a lot of people still use them. So I'm going to click that little I email cloud button there, and it's going to say, what do you want to do? We're going to go ahead and insert this email from John, and we're going to either put it in as a recent interaction or an activity. Here's some screenshots. Whoops, went one too far there. Here's some screenshots of what it looks like on the phone. Um, amazingly enough, very similar to what it looks like in the web. And I'm going to show you this working in IE, I'm sorry, in Outlook, um, the desktop client, and it's going to look the exact same. So I'm going to show you that as well. Speaking of which, enough of this. Let's go and take a quick look at it. <clears throat> I'm sitting in my demo account. I'm going to send an email out to some people, uh, to a person that just joined the committee. But before I do that, I see... Uh, that I've got some other emails here and some stuff's going on. Trisha has emailed me and she wants to be a volunteer for our organization. Well, this is great, but in the old days, we'd go ahead and we'd forward this email over to someone, hope they saw it. It would get passed around the office. And if we looked at Trisha's record in IMIS, we would never know that she wanted to be a volunteer. So what are we going to do here? We're going to click our little I email cloud button. And when we click that, it logs in. It's going to go out there and find her record, is found her in my database, and I can say, let's put this in as an interaction into IMIS. It's also trying to insert my demo IMIS um, username and password, but uh, I mean user, because you may want to insert this onto the person that received it as well. Um, but I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to just say add as a recent interaction. To see what that looks like, I'm going to go back to IMIS. I am using IMIS 2017 here. You don't have to be on 2017, but I wanted to show you 2017 to show you it did work. Uh, and you can tell I'm on 2017 because it logged me out, but that's okay. Here's the email that Tricia sent me. The full email, all HTML, looks beautiful. It's right in IMIS. But if I want to see it in my desktop, Right, the old desktop, I need to insert it as an email. So let's go back to our web. And let's say add that as an email activity. And now it's gone and done that. Hopefully, we'll find out. And uh, save changes, no. Nope. Here we go. We're going to go right back. Oops, so save changes, no. I don't want to save changes. Let's cancel out of here. We're going to refresh the record. And there it is, um, the emails that we've actually seen that we've just put in from her. We go out here, we can even find more. So her volunteer email now is on her record in IMIS. There it is. 
dropped right in. So that's dropped in. Now notice that when we put it in IMIS, we strip all the HTML because we don't want to see all that funny stuff. So we're not going to see any anything other than that until I didn't delete the other one properly. But let's go back to what we're going to do. We're going to go and send a new email here. And I need to send this to, I don't know, it's one of my members. It's John, John G. I'm going to hit my I email cloud button. I'm going to go to contact search. His last name is Gallus. It searches my IMS database and it finds him. I'm going to click that. It's dropped him right up here. Let's jump right back to our groups. And let's go and choose a committee. Let's go and notify, say, the, the awards committee or the board of directors. I'll do board of directors. Here's the entire board of directors. I would actually like to copy them on this email. So I'm going to hit carbon copy. I'm going to hit select all. And it's dropped all of their information in here. So I can now jump out to John and say, John, welcome to the committee. Glad to have you here. See you Tuesday. Anything like that, I can go ahead and send this email or I have this little save to IMIS button. If I click this button, it says, what do you want to do? We're going to take this email. You want to drop it in as interactions or activities. Your choice. I'm going to drop them in as interactions going to take this and drop it in as an interaction on everyone's record. It's done it. Got it. It says, hey, don't forget to send it. You forget to send it and I can't help you. So got it. And now I can go out here and send the email to John. Done. That quick. What else can I do? Well, let's go and do one more email and let's jump over and do an IQA. One of the downsides, I used to do this with Google. One of the downsides is Microsoft Outlook is so quick with the returned emails. So uh, they all just disappear, so or they all just reappear as failed. I'm going to go out here. I'm going to go to my event management. I'm going to go to my default system. By the way, I love how fast they've got the IQA working here. Sometimes I get a little frustrated with the performance in IMIS. I love how fast they've got it working um, right into email. So we're going to jump right in here. Here's past registrants not registered yet for this year. I can go to that. It says, well, what filter? Well, I want everyone that's ever signed up for a NIOG event. Great. Run the query. This is everyone. I'm going to blind carbon copy them maybe so I can go out there and choose them all and just say, why have you not registered? It's a good time to point out iEmail is an Outlook tool. It is used for whatever you might do in Outlook. I probably would not email my entire membership and ask them why they haven't registered. But maybe I would re email my entire education committee and ask them why they haven't registered. So I can go out here. Uh, you bad person. Register now. Hit send or once again save it right out to IMIS. If I click that button, it's going to save this email on everyone's record. So let's show you one more cool thing. Here's Outlook. You all know and love it. By the way, let's kill that failure there. Here is Trisha's same email. And notice I have iEmail Cloud up here in the corner. When I click that, Amazingly enough, it looks just like the web. In fact, there was no installation necessary. All I had to do was log in to my Outlook, and it instantly appeared. It already knew about this. There was nothing required. And now I can go ahead and say add that as an interaction. Or in this case, maybe I want to close out of here, and maybe I'm going to take Brandy's email here. I hope she's in my IMS. We'll find out. And I'm going to hit the IML cloud so I can take any email from any member drop it right into IMIS. Boom, it's in there. Someone can follow up and do fun stuff with that. Same sort of thing, create a new email, click on iEmail Cloud, search my entire database for anybody that might be out there. So we'll go out here and we'll say Morris. I hope there's someone named Morris out there. And there we are, there's Doug Morris, me. Boom, right in the two. Doug, you rock. I do fun things like that. Send it, or I can save it to IMIS if I need to be reminded of that. Okay, that is the product. Like I said, you saw it in Outlook, you saw it on the web. Sorry, you don't see it on my phone, you don't see it on a Mac, but it does run on a Mac, which is really cool because we've been uh, asking about that for years. It was a Microsoft limitation. They've gone and fixed it, so we're super excited. <clears throat> a couple times I've talked about our desktop product. The desktop product is different than the cloud product. It does more and it does less. 
It will support anything you attach it to. If you're using Outlook against an old version of Exchange, Gmail, or even Office 365, Desktop will support it. But Desktop will only insert activities right now. You gotta be on a PC. It will not work on Outlook for the Mac. It does work with IMS 15.1.3. And a real powerful thing with desktop, it will insert the actual email. So I can open up a record in IMS, open the attachment, and hit respond right from IMS desktop, which is really cool. Cloud product's different. You gotta be on Exchange or Office 365. You can insert as an interaction or activity. That little star says activities don't exist in 100 or 200. We support OWA, Office um, on the web. Uh, Outlook Web Access, sorry, Outlook 2013 and 16, and Outlook 2016 Mac. And this little one needs to be fixed because we now support 20-315.13 uh, and higher. There's my, no support for attachments yet, by the way. There's probably the biggest thing about cloud, you cannot do attachments right now. We're trying to work with Microsoft to support that. When we can support it, we will probably only support it on interactions. IEML Cloud is not an upgrade for IEML Desktop. It is a product that we see people using in combination with it. It's a separate product. Um, it is priced per user. Pricing starts at $12 USD per user per month. We're looking at releasing IEML Cloud Lite. IEML Cloud Lite is designed for, say, your chapters. Maybe you want to give one person at your chapter access to all of the members in that chapter. You don't want that chapter administrator to maybe email your entire membership. He or she should only have access to who is in their chapter. So we're going to be able to do something like that. You'd be able to do it for a company or a committee. Imagine giving your uh, the president of your organization the ability to email anybody else on uh, the board, they'll be able to do that. And that pricing is gonna be at $6 per USD per user per month. And then once you get above 10 users, we start discounting it. So that's some cool stuff there. I don't see any questions, but maybe you guys have some, so I'll leave it. That tells me I did really, really good. Um, while you might be thinking about that, there's our contact information. There's where you're gonna find this webinar, um, hopefully within uh, 24 hours. And there's our sales email address. Feel free to email us any questions you have regarding the product. Um, I do want to thank you for giving up part of your morning. Uh, and once again, um, that's about all I got. I hope you liked it. You'll get a little survey after this. If uh, you could fill that out, any, uh, any feedback you have would be really helpful. So thank you very much, and we will hopefully see you soon. By the way, uh, don't forget the NIAG Asia Pacific coming to uh, October 16th through October 18th. I will be there. Uh, it's going to be down in uh, Melbourne this year, so pretty excited about that. Hope to see you then. Thanks so much.